السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we'll start إن شاء الله now um, thank you all for uh, I cannot say for coming uh, just for joining uh, the webinar webinar today um, I'm really happy to see all of uh, of that uh, volume of uh, of attendees ما شاء الله الحمد لله um, so a couple of announcements before we start uh, if you have any question you will see that uh, the <coughs> the IT representative شجاعه Uh, is there you can privately chat with him if you have any technical problem um, you will be all muted um, and if you have any question please put it on the chat uh, don't send it privately put it on the public chat uh, I, i will pause um, two or, or three times inshallah during the the webinar to take questions and there will be inshallah an open uh, question answering uh, session at the end of the of the seminar inshallah Um, in case there is any problem, I have a backup uh, plan uh, using Webex. I would send you, inshallah, the link uh, by email in case Zoom is not uh, is not working for us. But inshallah, uh, for now it is uh, it seems good. Um, I think, uh, yes, please make sure that you turn off your camera. Um, just make sure that your camera is off and you don't start your video. Um, okay, so inshallah we'll start now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, this talk, inshallah, in this talk I will present uh, our COVID-19, uh, which is the first Arabic COVID-19 Twitter dataset with propagation network. Uh, I'm Tamir Said. I'm an associate professor uh, in Qatar University, associate professor of computer science in Qatar University. And this is a joint work with my students, Fatima Hawari, Maram Hassanin, and Reem Suwailah, and all of us are from Qatar University. Um, Before we start the uh, the talk by saying or by detailing uh, how we got this data set, let me explain why we got it. So um, in the era of corona coronavirus, we all agree that we are living an exceptional moment, an exceptional moment that the entire hum humanity is trying to handle a situation that it has never faced before. Um, Now, inshallah, we will get out of this and we will get out of this uh, more uh, stronger and uh, probably different. And when we get out of it, we will look at it back and uh, um, see it as an exceptional history, an exceptional history that we need to carefully analyze now and in the future in order to learn from it and in order to draw lessons from it. Um, And to do so, the history has to be written before being analyzed. So we have to write the history. We have to capture the history before we are, we are able to analyze it, either now or in the near future, inshallah. Um, so the objective of, the, of, the, of that work, or of our work, is to contribute to capturing current history in the Arab world in order to, to enable efficient and effective analysis. So we need to capture the exceptional moment that we are living in a way that will enable future uh, analysis and research in an efficient and effective manner, inshallah. Now, um, journalists, writers, and historians can do so by following up with the news, by documenting the events, or maybe sometimes by interviewing people. But computer scientists, don't do that or can't do that easily. Instead, computer scientists collect data that captures the exceptional history. Okay, so the goal from that work, because we are uh, computer scientists, is to collect data that will give us a good representation of the exceptional moment and the exceptional history that we are living now in the era of coronavirus. Um, now, how we do so, Um, of course, you know that while coronavirus um, enforced us, unfortunately, to cover our mouth, but at least till now, alhamdulillah, it didn't enforce us to cover our thoughts and our emotions uh, um, and our reactions. So uh, people in the Arab world and in the entire world go to social media to express their, th their opinions, their think thinking, what, uh, what they are thinking about what, what they are uh, um, um, doing in, in the new lifestyle. 
all of that is captured on the social media and in particular Twitter. So what we will do is to capture these tweets. Of course, we will not be able to capture all of them. They are huge number, there are a huge number of, of tweets um, in the Arab world and in the entire world, but we will try to capture a, a good representation of uh, this uh, set of tweets in a way that will enable efficient and effective analysis, inshallah, now and in the future. So that's the motivation behind our COVID-19, uh, behind the data set that uh, we released as the first Arabic Twitter data set with propagation networks. Here is the outline of my talk. I already covered why, and I hope that uh, I convinced you that we really need such data. Second, we will uh, talk about how we collected such data and the strategy that we uh, adopted in collecting this data. Third, what did we release actually? What kind of the data that we released to the public? Then we will talk about a preliminary experiment or preliminary analysis that we did here in Qatar University about the data to show you some of its own characteristics. Then we'll talk about uh, some examples from different domains in which we think that um, uh, ARCOV-19 will be good for doing research and analysis on. Finally, you will say how to go from this point, how to go from the point when we collected the data to the uh, next step, inshallah. We'll start with how we collected the data. So what we did is that every uh, night since January 27, since we got the idea of collecting such data, we collected some of the keywords and hashtags and phrases that are related to coronavirus. Something like COVID, virus, uh, hashtag virus corona, corona mustajad, and so on. For each of these, we, um, um, we uh, pose or issue a query or a search query to Twitter using search, the, the Twitter search API. So we use uh, a Twitter search API to get tweets uh, that are uh, related to such uh, uh, keywords or phrases or hashtags. Now, when we ask Twitter to return back the search results, we ask it to get the top tweets, or in other words, the popular tweets within the day. So we do that at the end of the day. We ask, we issue uh, multiple queries based on the phrases or the hashtags that we are uh, that we collected, and for each. A query, we get back uh, search results. And Twitter, by its own uh, strategy and criterion, give us back, gives us back the popular tweet, the top tweet, the tweets that have the uh, largest influence within that day. So not anything, not everything, just the popular tweets. And the limit of Twitter API is just 3,200 uh, 3, tweets per query. We get these popular tweets, and then because we use multiple queries to get them, we might have, we might end up with tweets that are, uh, um, that appear in multiple uh, search results. So we remove the duplicates, we remove the copies, and then sort them by time and eventually uh, store them every day. So that's what we call here the source tweets. So the source tweets, when we talk about source tweets in our talk here, we mean the tweets that we collected daily by uh, issuing search queries to Twitter. Um, now we do that every day, okay? So since January 27, 27th, up to this moment, we collect search uh, results every night. Actually in, uh, at 11.30 p.m. we do this search for every query. And we keep updating these uh, uh, phrases or hashtags based on what we uh, observe in the current uh, trending topics every day around Corona. So since, two, so since January two, uh, 27th, up to this moment, we, uh, we collect these tweets daily and we release all the tweets that we collected up to March uh, uh, 31st, um, but we are also releasing the uh, other uh, uh, um, uh, daily tweets over time. Uh, we'll talk about that inshallah later in detail. Now, in addition to that, in addition to these popular tweets, we also collect what we call propagation networks. 
So if we got the tweets that we collected for one day, and then we sort them locally by the number of retweets and the likes. So the sum of retweets and likes. So that means that the most popular of them will be higher in the rank. We got, we get, uh, we sort them all, okay? And we take just the top 1,000 of them, just the top 1,000 from every day by the number of retweets and likes. Now, this sorting or this criterion is a local criterion that we chose just to make sure that we get from these the top popular, most popular tweets. And we define most popular by the number of retweets and likes. Now, let's say that we got the top 1,000. For each of these, we pick each of these and collect retweets of them. So what do you mean by collecting retweets? We, we see or we uh, collect the information of who retweeted the, this tweet and when, who and when. Of course, this will be very important in several applications and we'll talk about that inshallah later in the talk. So given a tweet, we collect all the retweet network. So we call it the retweet network for that tweet. And we do so, of course, for every tweet in the top 1000 in this list. And we do so for every day. So, so far we collected tweets using the search API. We sort them by popularity. We get the top 1000 of them. And for each, we expand with the retweet network. We also, so uh, we uh, released this top subset. We call this one top 1000 tweet per day, the top subset. We released it. And we also released the retweet network for every tweet in this top subset. Now we do also similar, uh, in a similar way, we do collect the replies of each of these tweets. So again, we got the top 1,000. For each one, we don't only collect retweets, but we also collect replies. Okay, so the entire conversational thread of this tweet is captured and collected, and of course stored along with the uh, source tweets. So we have three types of tweets in our data set. We have the source tweets that we collected using uh, the search API, and we have the retweets, of the top subset, and we have also the replies of the top subset. And of course, we release, we release this uh, reply network. Now, this strategy, um, we adopted a narrow and deep strategy. So what do you mean by this? From among all the tweets that are posted, of course, we are talking about Arabic tweets here, among all the Arabic tweets that are posted on Twitter in any day, we get just the popular tweets using Twitter API, which means that the most popular from Twitter's point of view, okay? Um, probably the most influential ones, probably the most, uh, the, the ones that have uh, lots of impressions, okay? Many people saw them or interacted with them. So from all tweets, we get small subset, which is what we call the source tweets or the popular tweets. From that, we got even smaller subset called the top subset, which is the most popular among them using our own criteria, which is the number of retweets and likes. And for each tweet in this subset, we expand to get the retweets and we also expand to get the conversations. So we go now in terms of the quality of the tweets and then we go deep in each of these tweets to get the retweets and the conversations. So that's our strategy in collecting our data set, in collecting our COVID 19 data set. Now, is that typical? Is this, is this typical way of collecting tweets from Twitter? I guess no. The typical crawling uses the tracking API. So given the, uh, the uh, keywords that we collected, we want in the future get any tweet that matches these one at least one of these keywords. We then, of course, if we are using the free API, we then just 1% random sample of all the tweets. So that's the typical way of crawling tw uh, tweets from Twitter, is to use the tracking API, which will give us any tweet that matches any of the keywords, regardless of whether it is popular or influential or not. And that's, of course, subject to spam and what we call the electronic flies. So if they use the hashtags that we used, then we will capture 
their uh, tweets along with the other high quality tweets. So our uh, strategy allows us to capture influential content by getting the popular tweets as defined by Twitter, not any tweets. And also we capture the propagation networks for the most popular tweets among uh, the source tweets. We collect the retweet network and the reply network. The retweet network will be very important to do any uh, propagation or spread analysis to know how things are propagated during that time. And the reply network will allow us to do topical analysis to see what people are saying about these tweets. Now, what are the side effects of this? What are the limitations? Of course, there are limitations. Sure, there are limitations um, or side effects. The biggest side effect is that we don't have so many tweets. Um, usually, we uh, deal with millions of tweets, sometimes billions of tweets. But in our case, we, are, we have few million of tweets, but of high quality. Okay, so that's the biggest side effect that we have. We don't have very large uh, uh, collection of tweets. By the way, that might be good for some domains, um, but that's not typical. Typical, we deal with millions or billions of tweets that have anything and everything, but here we focus on just the popular tweets. Here are some examples of the tweets that, uh, that are captured by our data set. Uh, this is a uh, famous, of course, decision uh, about closure of uh, Saudi Arabia uh, uh, travel to Saudi Arabia for uh, Umrah and, and the visits of the uh, Masjid al-Haram. Uh, of course, that's, uh, that was temporary at the time, but eventually it was uh, kind of permanent uh, until this time uh, at least. Um, and here is uh, the uh, some of the replies uh, to that uh, very important uh, tweet and decision. Here is another uh, example of tweet that was really viral uh, at some point, uh, written by uh, an author from, I think, uh, uh, um, uh, Emirates, uh, talking about the relationship between Qatar and Corona, and also the set of replies, including some of the verified people are trying to talk about talk to uh, to the poll, to, to the author of that tweet. And as you see, the tweet has so many retweets and so many likes. A third example is about, uh, I think, a rumor about China that uh, China is uh, paying uh, some employees to collect uh, uh, dead bodies from the uh, from the homes um, in in um, multiple uh, periods in the day. Um, and uh, here are some replies, and you see that a good number of people liked that, and a good number of retweets also. And that's coming from a verified account, although it seems like, <clears throat> sorry, although it seems like a rumor. Um, we'll uh, pause here and check if you have any questions so far. So let me check if there are any questions so far. It doesn't seem to. Um, so I hope that you are following up uh, with the talk. Um, let me, uh, okay. Um, and if you have any questions, so there is one question actually. Uh, what is the difference between this and the hashtag? Uh, it's not very clear, but if you, um, if you mean the difference between um, keywords and the hashtags, so in the search queries that we used include both, include some hashtags and some of the keywords without the hashtag. Okay, so we included both um, and uh, we, we changed that over time, of course, depending on the trending uh, hashtags. Another uh, question, can the data set be used to analyze the spread of the fake news? We'll talk about that. The a short answer is yes, and we'll talk about that inshallah towards the end of the talk. So we'll continue now uh, with the talk. The third uh, part of the talk is about what, what is actually released. So what, what we released is, uh, I think, three things. The most important part of it is the uh, data set. We released the source tweets. We released the top subset. And, um, and with the top subset, we released the retweet networks and the conversation uh, threads, which are the replies. Now, there is an important note here that we didn't release the content or the text of the tweets. We just released the tweet IDs. And that's 
due to uh, Twitter uh, distribution policy. So Twitter doesn't allow us to release the content of the tweet, but allows us to uh, release the tweet IDs. And there are tools that uh, takes the tweet IDs and crawl the tweets for you. Okay, so given the tweet IDs, you will get, you can, uh, you will be able to get the content of the tweets yourself. But uh, for us to do that, that will violate Twitter's uh, policy. Okay, but there are uh, several uh, software tools that you can use to crawl the actual tweets. And we actually point to two of these tools in our repository as we will inshallah discuss uh, very soon. So that's the data set. Um, that includes source tweets, top subset, and the propagation networks. We also release the search queries if you just want to match the tweets for each day with the search queries that we used in each day. So you can do that. We also uh, release some statistics. We release uh, the top, uh, the most frequent words and hashtags and users. That's just a very quick preliminary uh, uh, statistics about the, uh, the data set. And um, also, we open source our code that we use to crawl the tweets. Okay, so uh, the code that we use to crawl, to search uh, Twitter API is open source and it is available also in our repository. How to get the data set? Here is the link. Of course, I will inshallah share the, uh, the slides with you. So you, can, you will be able to uh, go to this link and uh, check uh, what is there. If we have time at the end of the talk, inshallah, I will show you uh, what is there actually. But this is open, this is public. Uh, you can download it at any time. You, can, you, will, you will be able to download the tweet IDs, you will be able to download the code, and you will, able, or you will be able also to uh, crawl these uh, tweets using the tools that uh, we pointed you to. Also, the, the way that we collected the data set uh, and the preliminary analysis about it are all documented in our archive paper that is linked here. Now, we will talk about uh, the content of our COVID-19. Some uh, statistics, some characteristics of the, uh, of the data set, just to give you an idea what is there. So here is an overview of the number of tweets that we have. As I said, we started to crawl from January 27. The version that we have now on the repository is just up to March 31st, which means that we captured 65 days uh, since uh, January 27th. The number of source tweets we collected is about 74, uh, 748,000 tweets. 2.68% um, of them are geolocated, which means that uh, this was about 3% of them, um, uh, the location of the poster of the, or the author of the tweet is indicated in the tweet itself. And that's of course uh, by the, uh, the uh, author himself or herself. And this is typical in any tweet collection that uh, a very small uh, percentage of it will be geolocated. Um, 14.7% of the uh, source tweets are verified, and this is really a huge percentage. So if you think about it, 14.7% of the source tweets are written by verified, verified accounts. That's much more than what we expect from a random sample, okay? Um, of course, if we did a random sample, I don't think we will get more than maybe 1% of the tweets written by verified people. So that's an indication of the good quality of our data set. Also, 21.3% uh, uh, of the tweets have URL links. So of course, that's also an uh, uh, indication that people are trying to share news. Most of these links uh, would be news, would expect it to be news. And of course, that's uh, also expected during that period. So the characteristic that, or the statistics that we see here are uh, giving us an idea of how representative our data set is about coronavirus. Um, of course, the top subset is 65,000 because we collect 1,000 uh, tweet um, every day, the top 1,000 tweet every day, and we had 65 days in the data set currently. About the users who appeared in this data set, so remember we got uh, about 748,000 tweets those are 
um, authored or posted by about 248,000 unique users. Among those users, 1.42% are verified. And again, I think this is maybe one uh, order of magnitude or two order of magnitudes more than the percentage of verified accounts in the entire Twitter sphere. So if you think about all the users of Twitter, may, I don't think more than maybe one, maybe 0.1% uh, are verified. So this is 1.42% of the uh, users that are included in, the, in this data set. That's much larger than the typical number. And here is the average number of followers and friends and tweets that are posted by those users. And by looking at these numbers, it seems like the, um, the tweets in our data set are coming from people who are quite known in Twitter, so that they have on average 8,000 followers. They are following about 1,000 users, and they posted a lot of tweets already. Here is the distribution of tweets uh, over time. So uh, as you see, in the Arab world, we didn't talk much about uh, coronavirus until it started, the, the virus unfortunately started to spread in the Arab world. Okay, so you will see uh, around the, towards the end of February, the number of tweets started to get uh, uh, higher uh, and it's kind of steady over time, at least until uh, the end of March. Um, here is the list of top 20 uh, tweeters or top 20 users appeared in our data set. Of course, I'm talking here about uh, the source tweets. I'm not talking about the retweets and the replies. I'm only talking about the source tweets. Um, you will see here that if you look at the list here, actually about 15 of them are news agencies. Um, so you'll see here uh, Al-Sabah, Saad al barat from Egypt, Al-Arabiya, Al-Hadath, uh, Al-Watan, Al-Ghad, uh, Al-Anba'a. All of these are uh, news agents, uh, accounts of news sources, and that's of course uh, expected and also give you an idea about the kind of tweets that, that we are collecting. They are popular, they are influential, and although they are not uh, uh, too many, uh, relative to the uh, typical size of tweet collection. But remember that we collect for, for each tweet for in the top 1,000, we collect also the retweets and the replies. So we did this kind of expansion. Uh, one interesting uh, point here is that Al Jazeera doesn't appear here in that list. Maybe it appear down the list, but not in the top um, 20 uh, tweeters. Um, here is an, uh, an analysis about the frequent words that appear in, the, uh, uh, in our data set. Um, we excluded from this analysis, so this is the top 10 uh, words, excluding the words that we already used to search, because of course these words will be dominating anyway. So excluding the words that we used, like Corona, for example, that we used in the search, these are the top 10 um, um, words and these are the uh, percentage of appearance for each word over time, over the, uh, the list of, uh, of the days. So this is a time series uh, curve here or graph. Uh, you will notice, of course, some of the, or several, or most of the words, of the top 10 words are related to Corona, something like uh, the virus, Hala, Isaba, Intishar, Adad, all of these are uh, mostly uh, related to uh, news. Or talking about Corona, but the most interesting thing is that the top one was the word Allah uh, or God. Um, and it wasn't just the top in one day, but it appeared in other days uh, like this, like this, and also in the last uh, uh, two weeks of March, it was the top. That's really, really interesting. And um, if you think about it, the word Allah rarely, at least to me, appears in the news, in the titles of news. Um, so uh, that was really surprising to see. And this is something for the social scientists actually to, uh, to study during this, uh, this period. Of course, there are topics or uh, 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 controversial topics about whether this is a test or not from Allah. Uh, so probably this is the, uh, uh, 
this is the reason, but the, uh, the actual study should be then done by social scientists. Again, also, we will look at, we we'll see uh, the word Allahumma, which is, of course, related to Allah. Um, now, we look at the top frequent hashtags. So here we, we looked at the top frequent uh, words. Um, now we, we look at the top frequent hashtags. Also, again, excluding the hashtags that we used in search. So you will see uh, the hashtags that are related to some countries. Uh, like al seen in the beginning, and you will see that after it started to sp the virus started to spread in the Arab world, it got uh, decreased a lot, um, and started to see spikes of um, uh, hashtags that are related to uh, specific countries like Iran, like Lebanon, like Al Kuwait, uh, and so on. Um, that um, motivated us to align this with the days in which the, uh, the first infected cases were reported in each country. So we did that. Of course, we, we limit that to the other countries. And uh, we will see something like, for example, in Lebanon, the first reported or documented case was in 21st of February. And that's exactly where this, this spike happened. Okay, so that's the spike where the first case of Lebanon happened. And of course, started after that, the hashtag Corona Lebanon and so on. Uh, for Kuwait, uh, similar thing. This is the spike of the hashtag of Corona Kuwait started at that time and then, uh, and then uh, decreased over time and so on. There's another hashtag here for Kuwait. So of course, we, usually one hashtag starts and other hashtags uh, follow on the same topic. That again motivated us further to do the analysis, but limited to the names of the Arab countries. Okay, so here it was just the hashtags, not all the hashtags uh, were related to Arab countries, but here we only focus on the names of the Arab countries, the appearance of the names of the Arab countries in our data set. And when we uh, matched it with the timeline of first reported infected cases in the Arab countries, we found in several cases perfect match with the spikes. So for example, here's uh, Al-Emirat. This is the first spike of Al-Emirat. Here's Egypt. We'll find that it, it perfectly aligned with the spike of Egypt. Uh, Lebanon, uh, same. Um, Al-Kuwait here, the same. Uh, Qatar, even if you look at um, um, here, so that's the curve of Qatar, the brown one. It started to spike, it continues at, uh, uh, in, in the next day and so on. Uh, Libya, uh, uh, the same, uh, same case. And, and so in, in several cases, actually that happened. So that means that our data set actually captured the major events that are happening in the Arab world related to coronavirus. Of course, that's an example, um, but it is really revealing that our data set is a good representative at least to do the analysis on a written history. Here is the list of top domains uh, in the top subset. So given the tweets that appear in the top subset, um, what are the domains that are linked in these tweets? Uh, this is uh, the top 20. You will see uh, some domains, of course, most of them are, again are news uh, from uh, the Arab world, from Egypt, from uh, Saudi Arabia, from Emirates, from Kuwait, and even uh, some foreign agencies like RT, like CNN, some Chinese ones like CGTN, and so on. Here's the distribution of the tweets uh, geographically. So, um, so that's, that's KSA, that's Kuwait. So the large portion of the uh, geolocated tweets come from Saudi Arabia, and this is, again, uh, an artifact of the, uh, the, uh, the distribution of tweets in the entire Twitter sphere. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a fact that most uh, users or most tweeters in the Arab world come from uh, Saudi Arabia. So that's expected. The, the, the uh, observation that was not expected really is to get, is to see Kuwait in the second rank in terms of uh, uh, geographical distribution. And uh, we, 
believe that's uh, because of the uh, measures and procedures that Kuwait started in the in the Gulf area to take uh, once uh, the uh, infected cases started to happen. Um, of course, again, uh, social sciences will will need to study these things and to draw conclusion conclusions from that. And that's the distribution um, over um, over the days. Um, this is the distribution of retweets. So now we'll talk about, uh, we will, we will um, focus on the uh, propagation networks. So getting the tweets in the top subset, this is the distribution of retweets over time. Um, and uh, notice that the, the uh, scale here is logarithmic, okay? So this is one, this is 10, this is 100 and so on. So you will see that uh, the majority of course of the, uh, of the tweets have like from 10 to maybe 50 retweets, but a good portion have more than 100, about maybe uh, one quarter of them. Uh, this is the, the quartile, the fourth quarter, quartile of the distribution is above or almost at 100. Some of them actually are very uh, uh, highly retweeted uh, like this. This, is, uh, this has more than uh, 10,000 retweets at that day. And of course, you also notice that the, the retweets have increased over time and that we saw this pattern also in the distribution of tweets. Um, one thing that we didn't mention before is that the total number of retweets is 2.7 million. So remember that we had only 65,000 uh, tweets in the top subset. So those uh, uh, tweets in the top subset have been retweeted 2.7 million times overall, and we captured all of them. Um, same with the replies, but the only difference is that we, we are still getting the replies up to this point. So what we got so far is up to uh, March 8. Um, it takes some time to get these replies. And what we collected so far is about 665,000 replies to the tweets, the top tweets in uh, about, I think, 45 uh, days so far. Now uh, we will switch to a new section. Let me see if there are any uh, new questions to take before we continue the talk. Um, Okay, so there is a question. Uh, did you remove the tweets? Okay, lots of questions. Did you remove the tweets with links and pictures? Uh, the answer is no, we didn't. Uh, for replies, you selected all the replies, not the most popular ones. Yes, we selected all the replies. We got the entire conver conversational thread for each tweet in the top subset. Uh, so that we capture the entire conversation. Um, have you differentiated between subjective and objective tweets? Uh, no, um, we didn't use any automatic way to do that. Uh, this is maybe in the future, inshallah. That's uh, some uh, kind of analysis that we might or other uh, researchers can do. Um, may we have this presentation slide by email? Of course, yes. Uh, is it possible to have top tweet? I will send it inshallah later. Is it possible along with the, uh, with the video? Is it possible to have top tweets by individuals and the news sources separately? I think you can, but you have to code it uh, in a way that, you will, that uh, will give you what you want. Uh, what ethical issues should researchers take into consideration when analyzing tweets? That's a really big, uh, question and big topic and might be uh, a topic for another talk. Um, uh, people from different domains should talk about that, not only computer scientists. Uh, why the word Corona doesn't appear in the top? Uh, we said that we excluded the words from this, uh, this time series. We exclude the words that appear in the search queries. And of course, Corona was used in the search queries. So we didn't uh, plot it in that uh, time series graph. Uh, I don't think it is surprising that Allah would appear because when there is a cal calamity, we tend to remember the 
creator of course yes yes uh, that's i agree with you of course naturally allah is to be uh, appeared frequently yes yes but but we are talking about uh, i agree of course with you but we are talking about tweets here that um, are very influential and um, most of them might be spreading news and probably commenting on this news of course will have the word allah okay uh, so that's why we said that, I said that I, I was surprised that um, Allah is the top word. It's not just among maybe the hundred, the, the top uh, uh, most frequent hundred words, or, for, for example, but it is the top, uh, of course, excluding Corona and, 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 uh, and the virus. Um, so this is something to be really studied, to be carefully studied and, and to, to see why uh, this happened in this specific subset. Randomly, I agree with you, it can happen. But for this subset, we need to study this. Um, when you analyze the top frequent words and hashtags, I don't understand this. Uh, for how long, maybe we can, can take it at the end. For how long will the archive continue to work? <laughs> okay. Um, that's a hard question. We don't know, of course. As long as we are in this situation, we will continue crawling. Um, hopefully, inshallah, this will be uh, ending very soon and we will stop our, our crawler, but uh, so far it is continuous. Um, which cloud-based software analysis? I don't produce these preliminary analysis. Oh no, this is, these are all done very quickly by uh, Python uh, code. Um, uh, do you think this, the research that could run based on that data will, if, will select samples randomly since the content is of the tweets is not showing? Oh, no. Um, of course, we don't share the content, but you will, uh, you will be able to get it. Everyone will be able to get it. Okay? Otherwise, you will, not, you will not be able to do any useful uh, analysis, any, any useful content analysis. The, the, it's, it's only that we cannot do it due to Twitter policy. But you will be able to do it freely, okay? So you would use a free uh, uh, open source tool that will crawl the tweets for you. But I cannot give you a copy of the tweet, of the tweets directly. So uh, we will continue, inshallah, uh, the last part of the, uh, of the talk. And in that, talk, in that part, we will talk about um, an example of use cases that we think uh, can be done using ARCOV, 50, uh, ARCOV 19 datasets. So uh, we will talk about four domains. Three of them are more technical and of course from computer science area and the last one is not. So we'll start with text mining, the closest to my research interests. There are uh, many uh, scenarios in which we can use uh, our data set for. And again, I'm emphasizing that what I will say now are just examples. There are many other things that can be done. So the first thing is to do automatic topic detection and tracking. It would be very interesting to, uh, to know what people are talking about. And to do that automatically, that will be really challenging. Another um, uh, use case is to detect not only general topics, but events and sub-events within these topics. One important thing to, uh, to also analyze the, uh, the, the data is to do uh, an automatic summarization. So if I want to uh, write a timeline of the events that are happening, I would like to summarize them. So how can we do that automatically? This data set is full of events that are happening, full of decisions that are taken, um, full of reactions to these decisions. So summarizing all of that will be really interesting topic, uh, of course, from the research perspective, uh, and hopefully uh, uh, to, to get products out of that. Um, geolocation is also an interesting uh, problem here, since we have a good portion of the, uh, of the data set to, be, uh, to have locations, so we can do geolocation uh, research. Geolocation here means uh, automatically detecting where the tweet uh, from where the tweet was posted, okay? Uh, so that kind of, uh, uh, of research or, or uh, problem is very important in case of emergencies, 
uh, it is very important to know that someone needs help and that one is in that location, for example, so that we can, uh, or uh, people uh, who can uh, get, uh, get to him or to her and help. Um, another thing that is related to geolocation, which is eyewitness identification. So in our case, in our uh, coronavirus data set, uh, sometimes it, it, it will be uh, um, important to know people who saw infected people or who saw some uh, violation of some uh, procedures. Uh, so these are called uh, eyewitnesses uh, and identifying them are important because these people will be kind of experts at the moment that they, uh, they can uh, really answer some of the important questions. Another area is misinformation detection. Um, and that's related to one of the questions that I got. Um, so one of the problems that we can do is fake news uh, detection. Um, we are guessing that lots of tweets here are news. <clears throat> of course, not all of them, but good portion of the, uh, of the uh, at least the top subset are uh, news. And we saw how many are linked actually, about 20% uh, or 15%, uh, I don't remember, the, the number of tweets that have links. Um, so lots of fake news. So, and for lots of rumors, we need automatic uh, ways to uh, detect those fake news and rumors. Um, another related problem, which is claim verification. So um, for, for this problem, we were dealing with automatic ways of detecting the rumors themselves. Now, once we get a rumor, we want to know whether it is false or true. Okay, so verifying this claim. Uh, another thing is to try to get uh, to know how misinformation or how fake news are propagated. And that's the kind of uh, work that for which the uh, propagation networks will be very important. Okay, because we, we want to know how fake news were propagated, how this piece of news or how this claim was propagated. And not only how, who propagated it. So propagators identification is also very important um, uh, problem. And the way that we collected the data set enables such uh, research uh, work. Uh, a third domain is natural language processing. There is lots of problems in this domain nowadays. Uh, I will just list a few of them. The first one is stance detection. So in this, uh, uh, in this time, we are all giving or expressing emotions and opinions about things. We want to automatically uh, see what is the stance of people against or towards a specific issue. And when people do express their stance, they express it sometimes positively and sometimes negatively. So we also want to do sentiment analysis automatically. Um, Sometimes also we see offensive language uh, in the tweets. In these hard times, uh, we see that a lot, and we want to see to uh, to uh, to do uh, or the the data set uh, will allow work on offensive language detection uh, automatically. Related to that, we can do also hate speech detection. So hate speech uh, hate speech is a kind of special case of offensive language. Hate speech is targeting specific group. So we also, uh, this is a, another problem that, um, that can, uh, can be uh, studied, uh, especially that we are collecting replies. And as, we, as you saw, and as also I answered one of the questions, the replies are not the most popular. We are actually getting all the replies for a specific tweet. So we can really focus on uh, um, detecting offensive language and hate speech within the conversations. The last one will be on uh, social sciences. Uh, I'm not expert in social sciences, but here are the things that we thought might be of interest to social scientists. Um, of course, social scientists would love to uh, study the public opinion and reactions to what is going on uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Arab world and, uh, or by the governments uh, or by the schools and so on. So uh, public opinion, uh, reactions are very, very important to study well uh, in order to uh, maybe raise awareness of some issues, um, uh, react uh, uh, officially to some of the uh, reactions and so on. 
Another thing is topic identification. What people are talking about in these hard times? What people are talking about while they are at home? Um, will that be different from the topics that people are, were talking about in other days or not, or in other situations or not? All of these kind of studies can be done, done by social scientists. Um, one special case of that is gender gap. So uh, here we are trying to see the differences between uh, um, uh, men and women in uh, reacting to particular issues. So for example, um, um, is it the case that men are uh, happier at home uh, these days or women are happier at home? Um, whether women are more willing to volunteer or not. So this kind of, uh, of social things um, are very important to the community. Uh, also, uh, psychologically, what are the psychological uh, differences between the two sides uh, with the events that are uh, rolling up uh, now? All of these things can be studied uh, using our data set, inshallah. Now, what's next? From the point we are now, where can we go as a team uh, at Qatar University? So what we are doing is that we are still crawling, as I indicated uh, earlier, uh, daily collecting source tweets, collecting top subsets, and collecting propagation networks. We'll keep doing that, inshallah, until uh, very uh, near future. Um, we are also tracking um, using the tracking API, um, just to make a comparison at some point between the data set that we are using and the data set that we can collect by tracking. We started tracking, unfortunately, only since March 7th, uh, but we are still doing that. Uh, it will be nice and maybe will enable lots of uh, research uh, studies on the data set if we can provide a web search interface. So an interface that like Google, you type queries and you get the tweets from our data set that are related to this uh, query so that you will get an idea of what is actually inside our data set without uh, uh, collecting uh, the tweets yourself. Another thing is that most of the research studies that I talked about earlier uh, needs labeled data. Uh, they are mostly machine learning tasks, uh, or some of them, many of them are machine learning tasks. We need labeled data. And we started to do that for a specific task, which is fake news detection. So we are trying now to label some of the claims um, uh, whether they are fake or not, and also some of the claims that should be checked or not, because some of the claims might not worth checking. So we are doing that labeling uh, currently. And we are open, of course, for any kind of collaboration on this data set. And we are also uh, open to help anyone who wants to get the tweets uh, themselves. We, we will uh, provide guidance, especially if you are not a computer scientist. We, uh, you are welcome to contact us at any time and we'll try inshallah, to do our best to help you. So that's concluding uh, our COVID-19 webinar. Let me give you the key messages out of this seminar. So our COVID-19 is the first Arabic Twitter dataset that has propagation networks. We, uh, in, uh, the, the dataset constitutes 750,000 popular tweets and few million retweets and replies. We, and we used a deep and narrow strategy to collect those tweets. The tweets or the data set has good coverage, as you saw uh, from the topics and the frequent words uh, that appear. It has good coverage that, that is matching with the events during this time. The data set enables research in several domains, and I hope that I gave you uh, sensible uh, uh, examples about how you can use our data set in several uh, and different domains, including non-computing domains. Uh, the dataset is public and it is open source. Uh, the code you can use actually to uh, curate or to cre create similar datasets on your own if you want, uh, or you can at least explore how we did it. And the dataset of course is public and can be used freely without even uh, even uh, getting permission from us, you only need to cite our uh, paper that introduced the data set. And the, uh, the citation is uh, in, uh, in the paper, is in the uh, repository. Finally, this work is still ongoing uh, and in progress work. Uh, we didn't 
publish the uh, our uh, our work yet we just put it on archive so that people can start to use but uh, inshallah we will uh, we'll be we will be polishing it and uh, we are as we are collecting more tweets to inshallah publish it uh, in in a journal or a conference very soon i would like to acknowledge at the end uh, qnrf qatar national research fund uh, which uh, funded this work uh, in terms of an NPLP project and also two JSRA grants for two of my uh, students who, were, who are working on that work, on that piece. Um, uh, finally, I would like to thank all of you to attend, uh, for, uh, for your uh, attendance of this uh, webinar. I know that it is really hard in our busy uh, schedule, especially nowadays with the, uh, uh, with the exams are very, uh, very close. Uh, um, it, I know that it, it, it would be very hard to attend, but thank you for your time and for your listening and for your questions. And now I will open the door for uh, any of the questions that you have. I left here uh, the uh, accounts for my uh, group uh, and for my Twitter account. Uh, you can reach me at any time. And also this is the link to uh, my website. I will inshallah share the slides and the video uh, whenever it is available with all of you. Um, let me now open the door. Please just raise your hand if you have um, if you have a question. Um, let me. This is okay. Yes. So, if you have a question, please raise your hand, um, and I will take questions. Otherwise. Uh, I will just check again the um, uh, the uh, questions that I got in the last part. Um, so one, I think this is just a, uh, a comment. The reason for a Jazeera account not appearing in your data may be because it is blocked. Probably, that's a good point. That's a good point. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, so uh, we need to study that. We need to check that. Yes, that's, that might be a reason. Uh, why don't you share the data? Okay, I, uh, I answered this question, but let me again make it clear. We cannot share the content by law. We cannot. Uh, we cannot share the content directly. We can share only the tweet ideas, and you can get the content uh, using uh, open source tools, getting the, uh, the uh, tweet ideas. And we can help you doing that. So just email me and inshallah we can help you getting the tweets yourself. But by law, I, we cannot share the content of the tweets. Uh, how, are, how are you labeling? Oh yes, the labeling for fake news detection of course is done manually so that we can train our systems. Uh, can we apply the same analysis of Facebook? Uh, okay, the... Uh, Twitter has a good um, uh, API that is uh, freely available, uh, but Facebook is not. So it's not easy to do that on Facebook, uh, up to my knowledge. Can we apply, okay, when are you going to send us the slides by email? I will send the slides probably um, uh, tonight after getting some sleep. And um, inshallah, we will, uh, I will also share the, um, uh, the video once it is available. If you have any question, raise your hand now so that I can take your question uh, over the mic. Uh, otherwise, we will stop. So, any questions? I hope that I answered all of the questions. Ah, yes, okay. So, here is a question. So please, Al Atiyah, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, Doctor. Alaikum wa barakatuh. يعني ممكن أنا أتكلم بالعربي ولا لازم بالإنجليزي؟ Um, you can. Some some people here are not Arab, so it's possible you. بس Doctor, أنا صراحة أول شيء أشكرك وفريق العمل اللي معه على هاي المبادرة ويعني القيمة فعلًا يعني أنا مش أنا في psychology بس يعني فعلًا هي مكانة مبادرة قيمة. لنا احنا كمتخصصين في المجال الانسانيه وال 
في العلوم الإنسانية والنفسية حضرتك من شوي قلت أن أنتم يعني ما مش يعني علشان قانونيا ما يصير تشاركون محتوى ال محتوى ال يعني الريتويت طيب إذا إحنا مثلا كنا نبي نشتغل على ما يسمى بتحليل المضمون كونتنت أناليسز أوكي يعني شلون أنتم ممكن تساعدونا لأن فعلا دكتور مثل حضرتك ما يعني عرضت تقريبا في السلايدات قبل الأخيرة ممكن كيف ممكن أن يستفيدون الأخصائي المتخصصين في الجانب النفسي أو الاجتماعي في هذا الشيء شو ممكن وخاصة أن هي ممكن تعكس مخاوف يعني يعني لما نحلل المحتوى يعني انا ما اعرف اذا انا فهمت صح ولا غلط يعني لما نحلل المحتوى احنا عندنا احد المناهج اللي احنا ممكن نحلل المحتوى ونربطه ببعض المتغيرات اللي هي لها جانب اجتماعيه او نفسيه. نعم. ما اعرف يعني دكتور هل ممكن ان احنا نحصل على المحتوى ولا مثل ما اشرت حضرتك قانونيا ما يصير؟ لا احنا قانونيا ما نقدرش ان احنا تو شير الكونتنت معاكم دايركتلي بس انا احنا ممكن نساعد حضرتك ان انت يعني بابلكيشن معين يوران الابلكيشن ده يعني يعني تشغلي الابلكيشن ده عندك في يعني عن على الكمبيوتر بتاعك والابلكيشن ده هيجيب المحتوى بس احنا ما نقدرش ندهولك يعني طيب اذا انا اذا ولازم يكون نساعدك تشغلي نساعدك تشغلي ابلكيشن معين عشان تنزلي المحتوى ده اوكي طيب دكتور حتى لو انا ما كنت عندي حساب في في التويتر ااا آه اعتقد محتاجه ان انت يكون عندك حساب، الحساب يعني فري يعني يو كان يو كان لا انا ما ادري انه هو فري بس يعني لاني انا مش من مستخدمينه فبس يعني آه بس, بس تعملي ممكن تعملي حساب يعني مؤقتا بس من غير استخدام أوكي. بس حساب وتنزلي عن طريقه ان شاء الله التويت اعتقد طب ممكن يعني احنا اذا بعد اذن حضرتك لو تحط لنا الايميل ممكن شلون نتواصل معاكم مع فريق العمل آه لان آه. يعني احط آه. الايميل هنا في السلايد السلايد الاخيره دي هزود الايميل بتاعي ان شاء الله ان شاء الله شكرا دكتور شكرا ما قصرت الله يجزيك خير. اوكي. عبد الرحمن الشامي تفضل. عبد الرحمن. تفضل عبد الرحمن. السلام عليكم دو يو هير مي؟ يس. Th thanks a lot. Really, it's my. Uh, this is very interesting and uh, and very important topic. It's a current topic. Thanks for sharing this information with us. I'm from Mascom. I have the same interest to do to conduct uh, such analysis. Actually, we lack from the from having the tool from the perspective of computer scientists. Uh, I saw that the, many of your your results are a quantitative. Uh, result why from our perspective in masscom and other social sciences we need to analyze this uh, uh, these tweets from uh, uh, qu qualitative uh, perspective we yes. will need you a lot in the future this is really very important topic because we need to analyze even for the verified uh, account what they post is it verified information it is a fake information to what extent the, these tweets contribute to covid uh, in terms of informing e people and misinforming people in the same time, but actually we do not have those tools in terms of technology. So yes. I hope in future to have kind of co cooperation, these interdisciplinary studies, uh, a very rich field. Yes, Thanks I, for, really I, for sharing this with us. I, I totally agree with you um, that we need to collaborate together. The computer scientists are not good at doing qualitative analysis. We are good at doing quantitative analysis, uh, but it's not easy for us to do the qualitative analysis. And I think the opposite is from your side. So the best thing to do is to collaborate together. And that's why I put that in the slide that we really need to explore collaboration uh, opportunities here. And um, I, I, with my team, uh, are very open to such uh, collaboration, inshallah, opportunities. Just email me and we can talk, inshallah. Thank you, Doctor. Um, okay, I don't see any more um, uh, hands, but let me check if there is there are any more questions. I think. Um, can you share the name of the application? The name of the application is on the repository that is linked in the slides. 
So if you go to the, uh, to the repository, uh, you will find the names of the application and you can download them if, you, uh, if, uh, if that will be convenient for you. Um, I agree with the Dr. Abdurrahman and I also think that there should be more such meetings and presentations. Um, I really hope so. Um, and I am thinking along with uh, uh, some colleagues from social science uh, that, that we will, uh, inshallah, uh, uh, host a workshop uh, about how uh, computer scientists and social scientists can work together. Uh, inshallah, we'll do that, inshallah, in the near future. Uh, but before uh, doing so, I am open, and many of my colleagues in computer science are open for collaboration with, uh, with you as social scientists. I think we can solve together problems that, we, that any uh, one of, uh, of us cannot solve alone. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I think I uh, covered all the uh, questions. Uh, thanks again for coming. Uh, actually not coming, just joining uh, online. Um, thanks for attending and thanks for your time. And uh, please, if you have any more questions that, uh, in the future, uh, email me. I will, inshallah, uh, make sure that I put my email address um, in, the, uh, in the slides, at the last slide. Uh, and I'm looking forward to collaboration with any of you, inshallah. And if you need any help with the crawling the tweets, please uh, let us know. And inshallah, we'll try to help as much as we can. Thank you very much. And see you, inshallah, or talk to you, inshallah, in other uh, webinars. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.